Hello everyone and welcome to Frontier Community Access Television. This is the first episode of the Red Hawk Roundup. I'm Mason Smith. And I'm Tyler Waltwoods. And we're coming at you from FCAT Studios. We're going to be talking about fall sports today, giving you a recap of what happened, who made it to the playoffs, who didn't, and why. And we're also going to be giving you a little bit of a preview on winter sports and all kinds of fun stuff to look forward to in that department. Yeah, it's going to be a great show. Oh, Hope yeah. You enjoy. All right, so first up, we're going to be talking about fall sports. Uh, the season wrapped up a couple weeks ago now, yep. I think it was. Yeah, very shortly. And we had a couple runs uh, into the state tournament, the playoffs, and that was very, very exciting. We had uh, four different sports that got there, and the first one that we're going to talk about is boys' soccer. Yeah, Mason, they had a fantastic year this year. I was so excited to come see them play. Oh, absolutely. Every time that... We me and you went to cover a game. It was just so much fun. They had some incredible talent on that team. They really did. They really did. They also had a very heavy senior roster this year. I oh mean, yeah, it was the seven seniors, I believe. If I ten, ten, it was ten wow. seniors. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a stat. They had some very, very good players. Absolutely, and uh, there was also uh, I forget what they call it, but there's some with the. Uh, like state to get invited to like first team or something like that. Have you, have you seen them posting on Instagram about that kind of stuff? Yeah. Um, they, it's, I imagine it's some sort of relatedness award for, their yeah, order. it's, yeah. I think it's like an honorary sort of thing, yeah. although I'm not really sure, but, um, yeah, boys soccer, they got to, um, I think it was the sweet 16 that they got to, um, they ended up losing, um, it was either two to one or three to one, uh, to Monomoy. Uh, home game. It was a tough loss, and it was cold, cold day. Yeah. I remember I yeah. was there. I covered the game um, with our good friend Connor. Um, yeah. And it was. Uh, I th I think that part of it, part of that loss, had to do with just like it was a long season, and they were, you know, it's cold, and they were tired. Yeah, totally. I mean, they had a really great year. We have their stats pretty here. I mean, their coach this year was Evan Horton. I mm -hmm. has he been the coach for years? I actually am not sure. He was the coach last year. I yeah. think he's been the coach for a couple of years. Yeah. From what I've seen from this year and from last year, now that I think about it, he has done a fantastic job. Absolutely. And yeah. It, it's been really great. And what are we? We are in Western Mass Class B. Yeah. It, we example. went to uh, the Class B tournament for uh, Western Mass. And that was the other thing I wanted to talk about. They got to the Western Mass Finals, and they ended up losing to Hampshire Regional 2-1 yep. to one in overtime. That Ooh. was one of the toughest losses I've seen across across the board for all of the fall sports. That was one of the toughest losses yep. I saw all year. Painstaking. Yep. Absolutely. And it was, I mean, like, you have to, the tough thing about soccer is, like, the instinct is to blame the goalie for the loss, you know? Of course. But I don't think that you can blame Owen Babb for no. that loss. It was just some really great offense uh, by Hampshire Regional. They tired him out, and it was just a scramble in front of the net uh, at the end. Yeah, in a situation like that, that's not the goalie's fault. I mean, Absolutely not. it's it's almost unfair to just pin pin that on any player in any state. You know, like that's just mm -hmm. it is a team effort, win or loss. Yeah, I 100% you know? agree. So, yeah, yeah uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about uh, with them was what are you, how are you feeling for their uh, next season? Cause and loop back mm. to those ten seniors that really made this season for the Red Hawks. But at the same time, they're not going to have them the next season. Yep. Well, I would say that I still think they have a pretty solid team. They, um, Their sophomores have been really sh stepping up this year. I mean, I've seen so many young players doing very, very well. And this mm -hmm. is without even going back to our juniors on the team who are obviously going to get more playing time. Absolutely. And going up. Like, Take on know, those leadership roles and everything. Yeah, I yeah. know. Top of Vincent Warner, uh, William Redding, et cetera. They're, ben Catch. You know, ben Catch, of yeah, course. You great know. defender. Yep. And oh, and, yeah. not, and not to mention Owen Babb, too. Of course. I mean, I our goalie, he was already captain this mentioned. year. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he's generally the team has been for years. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. That goes without saying. Yeah, and their record to state is, was 14 and 1 in the year, I believe. Yeah, 14 and right? 1 on the regular season. That's yep. what it came down to. Yep. Yeah. Very yep. solid. 12 and 0 in the conference as well. So. Yeah. And another team that uh, did really, really well this season for the Red Hawks was girls volleyball. And that was no mm. surprise at all the big thing about their season was their coach sean mcdonald 
because yeah. it's his last year with the Red Hawks. Super tragic. And we, we're going to be interviewing him uh, soon. I think next week we're going to get him in here to interview him. Yep. Um, and we're going to be talking to him about how he felt the season went and everything like that and get some more information on that from his perspective. Yeah, the girls' volleyball team has been very great for years. I think, well, how many years has it been? In this a row? is the 18th Western Mass Championship in a row. That's absurd. I mean, it's I ridiculous. can't say I'm surprised that we got this again, but mm -hmm. it's like yet, yet again. It's so fantastic to see that our team is doing so far. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it was a tough way to end the season when you get that far, too, because, I mean, what did it say? Semifinals. They mm -hmm. lost in the semifinals. Uh, three to one was the score. And, yeah. you know, you get that far. You want to get to the championship. You want to win that championship. And it's a tough way to go out. Yeah, it's painstaking. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, I mean, again, to get that far is absolutely incredible. Yeah, I mean, they beat a lot of teams. Their final record was 14-5 and five in the year and 7-3 and three in the conference. It's fantastic. Yeah, and some of the teams that they lost to were, like, the bigger schools that they yeah. had that, like, yeah. divisional advantage, that sort of thing. And, I mean, something that obviously is a big question right now is how are they going to perform next season? They, they have a, they're going to have a new coach. Uh, they're going to have they're going to be losing plenty of their seniors including yep. Caroline Dean who had the most kills on their team for the entire season it wasn't even a close match it was just oh, her yeah. the whole way she was absolutely phenomenal and they're going to be without her and Sean McDonald next season yeah it's it's devastating just like that was really important to the team I mean they're the things that they brought to the team seemingly are like detrimental and uh, yeah, I don't know. I can't. I can't speak to what's going to happen next year. But I feel like we might be in like one of the things. Like we're not. We don't like. We're not going to get other play. We're just going to like reload the shot and then just go again. Yeah. You know? I feel like we can just continue to keep going and doing well. Yeah. Next year is going to be the test for them. I think is yeah. like you know because the coach that um I forget her name. I think it's a uh, Courtney Perrin, Although I'm not yeah. sure. Courtney. Um, yeah. She's one of the assistant coaches. She's been under Sean McDonald for a while, so we have to see if she's picked up on his like coaching strategies and yes. you know still working uh, with the players the same way that he did, and if that's gonna help them or if they just need they need a different coach and that's what's gonna help them. You know, you never know. Yeah, who knows? I mean, we're very excited to see, and like everyone I've oh, yeah. is really always enjoys the volleyball games as well as football. But you know, a lot of fun. Gotta. Keep going there. All the sports are great, but this is certainly one that might be a fan favorite, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. And one that, to pivot a little bit, one that isn't really a fan favorite, mostly because we can't really cover it that much, and I do feel bad about it, is cross country. Yeah. And cross country has had a phenomenal team for many, many, many years. Uh, the wonderful coaches, uh, Walter Flynn and yep. Bob Smith. Uh, it's a little bit farther to the other side. Yep. But um, they had one of their best seasons ever this year they got to uh states the states meet which is an incredible uh achievement and uh, i forget what they placed but i think that both teams placed in like the top 10 of states although i might be getting that yeah. completely wrong and i do apologize i mean that does seem familiar i mean they had a great year they were 14 and 0 and 8 and 0 in the conference and number one i mean that's an incredible year but i think the most outstanding thing to me for this year was seeing the uh, the girls cross country instagram page they were constantly posting really interesting yeah and funny um <laughs> funny things there and i think that really, didn't uh, they make like a promotional edit for themselves yes, at some point yes, yeah it was really solid and that was a lot of fun us at fchat were very very pleased by oh that. yeah that was that was that was fantastic and it was a lot of fun to watch yeah i mean that's like a whole different approach to getting people to come you know that's, yeah wow yeah very interesting. And yeah, I mean, that's the other thing. You mentioned uh, the girls' record, 14-0. and 0. They went undefeated overall, and that means they won against Hampshire. And that is mm. huge, because mm. Hampshire, every year, beats Frontier Cross Country, both teams, virtually every year. That's like wow. the one loss that they have. And they win, they go undefeated in league just because they're so dominant. But then Hampshire's always the one. It's uh, out of their division. It's a bigger school. Um, and they have just some insane talent over there. But the fact that girls cross country was able to pull off the win there, that's huge. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. 
And like going back to the things that we talked about before with different teams is like, are they going to mm-hmm. be able to come up again next year? Are they going to do just as well? I'm not too sure. I mean, yeah. all they have, their senior captains are all going to go as well as a couple other seniors. And that's true. I don't know. Is it doing? How, how do you think it's going to go? The other thing is, I mean, the for a lot of people at FCAT, we don't cover uh, cross country a lot. I used to run cross country, so I kind of know how the scoring works. And the big thing for your team is who your top seven is. They're going to be the scorers. And so if you look at the top seven on the roster, it's listed yep. up there. There are a couple. I mean, you, I'm looking over there. There's two eighth graders yeah. that are in the girls' top yeah. seven. And in boys, there was at least one eighth grader, and I think one seventh grader that were rounding out um, their top seven. So, I mean, like, the fact that you have that young of a team that's that talented is incredible, and it speaks to a really good future for them. Definitely. Yeah, I'm I'm incredibly excited. And I think they actually have some strong juniors as well on the team. So I think that they oh, yeah. can immediately have strong captains and a strong throughout team. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But just to go back to something you said just a little bit earlier, is um, we would we could cover these games more, but we just need more uh, FTF volunteers to be able to That's cover true. enough cameras to get all the events. Just, Absolutely. I mean, if we don't have enough people, then we're not going to be able to get this done. Just yeah. to seamless plug. Yeah, I mean, if you want to get coverage of this amazing cross-country team, you should volunteer for FCAT. Of course. Yeah. All right. So the last team that made it to the playoffs for Frontier was field hockey. Yep. And they've been doing that for a couple of years now. They also have a great coach, Missy Mahar, oh, yeah. um, and a very strong team. But what they were able to do this year, they were able to win Western Mass. And I think they also made it to the Sweet 16 of the state's tournament as well. Um, and they ended up – the big thing was they won Western Mass against – Greenfield yeah. that and that's okay. their big rival yeah, yeah. year like time and time again they've met Greenfield at the Western Mass Championship and it's gone both ways like plenty of times Frontiers won a couple yeah. years in a row Greenfield's won then Frontier Greenfield back and forth and Frontier was able to pull out. I think they won one nothing it was a really close tense game uh, that they had and it was very very exciting yeah, yeah, they what did be the uh, Greenfield one up to nothing in the finals. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, they've yeah. been pretty solid record overall, seven, six, and four. Yeah. yeah I mean, I I understand that field hockey is probably a game that's going to have a lot of ties. You know? Yeah, that's the thing because you know when you're looking at that, you're talking about all these other sports, and it's like, oh, they had four ties, and yeah. also like their win loss is almost like you know breaking even. It's like you know, for field hockey, that's very impressive just because of the you know the rate at which goals are scored yeah. and then also yeah. you turn around you look at some of uh, the scores they have western mass uh the semifinals against mahar yeah. they beat mahar seven to nothing that's that, ridiculous yeah that's a whooping wow like i i don't even because i've covered pl- several field hockey games mm-hmm. and more often than not i see no goals mm. no one scores then like even one goal happened the fact that some of the these games had like seven. I'm seeing five, four. And like, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, field hockey, I, I wish people knew like how exciting field hockey is. Like, like speaking from like a neutral party here, like, field hockey is a really interesting sport and it's much more physical and like strategistic, strategic than yeah. uh, normal. And, yeah, it's it's so interesting, especially and on I, turf too, because yes, that's when that's when they can move really fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it really just exciting gameplay, and clearly, as you can see from all the hype that they're getting, that you know, pretty good. Yeah, go out and support. Absolutely, and I think that field hockey is a team that doesn't have a lot of question of how good they're going to be in the future. They don't have that many Three. seniors. They're keeping their coach. And uh, Missy Mahar, she's been doing a phenomenal job coaching this team for many years now. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Missy. Oh, know. yeah. Absolutely. So those were the four teams uh, from fall sports that made it into the playoffs. And now we're going to do a little talk about the other teams that weren't quite able to pull that off. And we're going to start off with football. Football had they had a relatively decent season, I felt yeah. like. Uh, they ended. They had uh, two consolation games at the end of the year instead of going into the playoffs because they didn't quite qualify. And That's I think, close. yeah, I think they ended uh, their regular season before the consolation games. They ended uh, with a three and five record. I think is what four it was. and five. Yeah. Okay. Very yeah. very close. You know, it's it's okay in the conference. They only won four, but yeah, it's okay. I mean, 
I think it was a really good year. I I like the team overall. Like I feel like we played very well. It's just there's just some things that we really didn't reach upon, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that, you know, there was the other thing was there was a lot of seniors that were able to put up some really great yeah. performances. Yeah. I mean, our starting quarterback, Aiden Dredge, doing a great job holding his own in the pocket. Of course. Uh and you know, he, when he makes those connections with Ian Burt, it's just oh, it's electric, yeah. man. Oh yeah, That's, they are a star team and you also got a lot of people like Alex Schreiber, you know. Yeah. Really found into them and such a well is fun to watch it's amazing to watch him sometimes yep. and a lot of the other linemen who we don't give a lot of recognition to them because like i mean for me as someone who's like covering the games and calling out the names i can't see their numbers in the pile of it all you of know course. it's it's yep. it's tough for me to do that sometimes but yeah there was plenty of really great moments really exciting moments uh in uh the football season for them oh yeah uh, yeah it was a it was a solid team effort and the coach you know scott Dredge was fantastic but, mm -hmm. you know, we'll see how it goes. I think that they will have a solid year uh, from years to come, you know. Yeah. And it like, sort of seems to be, like, the pride of our school sometimes. But, it, you know, I feel like we'll hopefully have a better season next year. And that'll help yeah. us on when we keep going further. I agree. I think it might be a little bit tough. They do have, a lot, like I said, they had a lot of seniors. Yeah. So they're losing yeah, a yeah. lot of uh, their leadership, a lot of their uh, talent that they've come to rely on. People are going to have to step up. They're going to have to work hard, yeah. uh, you know, to meet uh, their coaches' expectations. But, um, you know, we were able to pull off some good uh, upsets this year, like our win against uh, Franklin Tech, beat them 27-22. Yeah. good game. Absolutely phenomenal game. I, that was probably one of the best games of football I've seen in a while. Yeah, better than the pros, I would say, in some past. <laughs> that, was, that was really, really good. Yeah, um, and I mean, you can't take a, you know, I won't, I really wanted to talk about that, but you also got to talk about some of the, you know, heartbreaking losses, like against East Hampton, 40 to 35, yeah. last second touchdown. That was just, Oof. you know, I yeah, was I mean, to watch. Back and forth, back and forth, you know. Absolutely. It's just a game by game thing, you know. I feel like we're going to be overall solid this mm -hmm. year, but it's just, it's just how it plays out, you know. Yeah, and I think football is a little bit uh, of a tougher sport because, like, they have less games, too. Because, you know, you think about it, they, uh, lost five games volleyball lost five games yeah but they had all those other games to come back from that course, as well of course not to say that the volleyball team is at the same level of play as football but just like the nature of the sport has its differences and that comes with difficulties naturally yep yeah yep. the other team that didn't quite make it to the playoffs was girls soccer uh girls soccer this is an interesting story they i think Someone, one of the players told me they missed out on, oh no, that's, that was golf. Uh, Cam Skevington was telling we'll me about that. that. We'll get to that in a minute. But um, girls soccer, I didn't get to cover uh, any of their games. Did you? Nor did I, no. No. We were the here for some of the games, and it seems as like they had a interesting season. They had mm -hmm. a 8 nine, one record, another sport that is not surprising when you see a lot of ties, you know? No, not really. Sometimes you can get stuck in like a bad situation where it's like back and forth, or you're just you can't get anything because like both teams are putting up a solid effort. What was their one tie? Who did they tie against? Yeah, let's see. They tied. I did not find it. Was it at the start? Yeah, oh, it was the first game. Holy oh okay. wow! Wow. Yeah, I mean that's not even that surprising, you know. Yeah, I mean Holyoke is a pretty good team. Uh, they do play. They d played against. Uh, is that the next game? Yeah, they yeah. they lost to Holyoke yeah. five to nothing in their next game against them, which is interesting. Wow. wow. I wonder what happened there. But anyway, uh, I think the m main interest I had with the girls soccer team and the story with them this year was they have a new coach, mm. Andy Rupp. Yeah. And so to me, I mean, I think that looking at the stats, looking at the record for the team, he did a relatively good job this year Definitely. to come in. Definitely you know, start coaching a new team and to put up just about, you know, a 50-50 win-loss record yeah. is it a good is a good accomplishment for him. And, you know, if do you think that that speaks well to, like, future games, yeah. future seasons? Yeah, I'd say. I mean, looking at their roster here, they don't have too many seniors. I feel like they can easily mm -hmm. rebound here. I see a lot of names that I see in the other sports as well, just generally Absolutely. athletic people. I feel like once, like, the coach and the here can like come up and like figure out something and they do work together you know be keep going i feel like they'll they'll be fine you know 
Yeah, absolutely. I think I agree with that. And now we're going to get to talking about golf. This is the last fall sport. And we also, that's another sport that we don't really cover a lot uh, at FCAT because it's also just, it's tough to cover. And it's also, it's a long sport. Not exactly, you know, without thrill. Yeah. Without like a lot of people in the background making sure that our connection is good, we can't really promise that we'd have a good production. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, golf, um, they had a pretty good season uh, this year. And they actually, the main thing that I would know about them is they missed, as a team, they missed out on the playoffs by one match. Wow. That so, is, yeah. Uh, it was so yeah it was it was a really good season for them they couldn't quite uh pull it off but they had oh i forget his name uh, i wrote it up for uh the red hawk uh report um one of their individual um uh, players qualified as an individual for uh the states tournament i think or something go. along those lines so that was uh very impressive to you know have a player that is able to do that it so. was a solid effort and like Every sport is seemingly to be like a team sport, but you know, there's sometimes where there's opportunities just like in golf where you can go all the way. And like, that's mm-hmm. still good to see. We our, The team is clearly doing pretty well. Yeah. No, you know, they didn't qualify for the next steps on, but that's, it's all right. Yeah. 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 And I think, I mean, they definitely have some uh, good players. Some of them I know, some of them I don't. Of course. But, you know, they have talent on the team. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised at all if I heard about them, you know, making it to playoffs next season. Yeah, I mean, we really value our sports here at the school, and Absolutely. I feel like it's it's this has been a rather good like good recap for fall. I mean, I feel yeah generally satisfied, you know. Yeah, I mean, mo- most of our sports teams made it to a playoff in yeah. some form or another, yep. you know, and not to mention I just loop back to cross country really quick. There was plenty of individual runners that had some phenomenal accomplishments. I know on the boys' team, uh, Luke Howard and Evan Hedlund, Mm -hmm. they both placed incredibly well um, in Western Mass meet, divisionals meet, and states meet, Mm -hmm. which is, Mm -hmm. I mean, like, um, I think that they're both, no, uh, Evan Hedlund's a freshman and Luke Howard is a sophomore. To have guys that young placing, like, that high at that level is absolutely amazing it's incredibly impressive yeah like that's really good for our near future like Mm -hmm. that's gonna be fantastic yeah very excited to see them playing this year in their respective sports yeah totally so yeah that's what we have for fall sports we're gonna be right back with a little sneak peek at what's to come in the winter Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We're going to be talking a little bit about winter sports. We got an upcoming season uh, just around the corner. Yep. Uh, we've already had the uh, first couple games that are happening. We got a game happening right now, as a matter of fact, yep. an away game. I think it's in Fitchburg? Or no, that's on No, that's, that's Friday. On Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting things mixed up. Anyway, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Girls varsity basketball, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that? No. Ludlow is girls, because I'm going to Ludlow. You're covering the boys. Yes. yes, Anyway, (laughs) all right, (laughs) we're getting off track. So we got plenty of winter sports to talk about. Mm -hmm. First up, as we were saying, is basketball. Got girls basketball and boys basketball. Tyler, how are you feeling about that, man? I'm feeling really excited overall. Yeah. I mean, basketball is one of my favorite sports. Absolutely. And we, I feel like that's, like, where we generally get the most of, like, a student section, which is, like, sort of seems like our like, mm-hmm. favorite thing. Like, that's always great. When there's a student section, we got the good energy. Yeah. So I'm really just excited for this year. Yeah, it's me too. Fantastic. I am too. And, you know, I – do you watch a lot of the NBA? Yeah, I mean, I watch some NBA. I'll, I like college basketball more, I would say. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, I agree. I I think that high school basketball and college basketball are just vastly more enjoyable than the NBA. And that's part yeah. of the reason why I love going out and like, covering all of these games. Yeah, and I'm sure we're going to be seeing that this year. I mean, I think we should start off with uh, girls basketball here. Mm-hmm. Um, they have always had a fantastic team, and it's super well-rounded, and I think it's – like, I think they're going to, like, do very well. I mean, last year we did lo- lose some good seniors, like, 
Kylie LaFleur. Kylie LaFleur. Right. I was just going to bring her yeah. up. Do you remember uh, last game of the season? We were there. Mm-hmm. It was out. It was out in Worcester, I yep. think. We so. covered a game there, uh, and it was like first, second round of playoffs or something like that. They ended up losing the game, but in the first half of the game, Kylie LaFleur broke 300 points. That was fantastic. It was amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, and like that was that was the highlight of the year for me. I think that was like really good. Yeah, and I expect to see just as great like accomplishments this year. I mean, this is like virtually the same team, and I, I'm super excited. It's yeah, great. they've had uh, only one game so far. It was it was last week, right? Yes. Yeah, they played against Southwick, and they won 45 to 35. So a good way to start it off. Yep. And uh, they got. It wasn't just one person getting all the points. Oh, yeah. Uh, Haley Akowski got the most points uh, on the team. Points. Yeah, 13 yep. points. They were posting about it. And um, they really they spread out the points a mm-hmm. lot, which I like to see, you know, the teamwork and everything. It's not just one person, you know, exactly. carrying the whole team. It's clearly like they value passing. They value, like, being able to move the ball and Absolutely. get to the points that they need, which is, like, the key to basketball, I feel. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I totally agree. And uh, boys basketball. How are you feeling about them? Because, I mean, like, yeah. they, I think, if I remember right, they had a little bit of a rough season uh, last year. There was definitely uh, some rough patches, I felt like. Yeah, I feel like the, in, like, the last, like, five so years of boys basketball, it's been sort of, like, some up and downs and, like, different variants mm-hmm. of, like, how we've been doing. I feel like we've always had some really, really good players, and it's just about, yeah. like, how we actually unfold. I feel like they just as equally have some great passing, great coach, everything's working well together. Just yeah. about how the year unfolds. Do you have any like prospects of any particular players or Well, I mean, we uh I did I covered uh a preseason game with mm-hmm. uh Isaac Warmgore. Um and that was a lot of fun. They played against um uh, Palmer, I yep. think it was. Um and they did end up uh, winning that game even though it doesn't matter but um i i think that in general there wasn't anyone that particularly stood out to me but at the same time i think that that's a relatively good thing because yeah, everyone on the team is around the same skill level they're able they were able to pass to each other a lot mm-hmm. and uh we had i think the leading the leading scorer was uh caden manning just because yeah. he's an incredible shooter he had six threes on the night, and that was his entire point total. He had 18 points. Wow. It was incredible. And uh, Max Millette, um, and I think I, I didn't, there was one other person who had uh, 13 points along with Max Millette on the night, and I forget who it okay. was, and I don't want to miscredit someone. But um, there was uh, some good point distribution among the team. Uh, and some really good defense that I was seeing, yeah. too. So I'm feeling pretty good about the season. I think that they definitely uh, have some areas that they could improve on. But again, that was a preseason game, so we don't really know for sure what they're going to be like. We're going to have to wait and see what the report is from their game that's happening right now, tonight. Yeah, overall, I'm gonna be really excited. And I think that's going to go well. Yeah, you know? absolutely. All right, wrestling is up next. Now, I've never covered wrestling is it match meet what do you call it do you know i believe it would be a meet meet yeah and yeah we sadly don't really cover this too much we used to um but there's a lot of issues we run into one of the main ones as eddie has been trying to convince me it's not too bad but uh we <laughs> need uh commentators and we need a f chat to get out there i believe mm-hmm. that there's a meet happening tonight that we are sadly missing yes it's, it's home against northampton I yes think. yeah um, but we promise we're going to try to get out there as much as we can yes. and maybe hopefully we can commentate and figure something out there. But mm-hmm. I'm excited. I do not know anyone besides Eddie who's on the team that I can recall off the top of my head. I think Javian's yeah. on the team yeah, too. There's Javian plenty. Yeah. A lot of the football team is on the wrestling team and I can understand why. Can't say I'm shocked. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah it it definitely it. makes a lot of sense. I mean, you see a lot of the soccer players going into indoor track. Uh, to get ready for, and you know, they do track uh, in their off season from doing soccer to, you know, stay in shape, get prepared. And for football, you just got to do different kind of training and wrestling does the job for that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it seems like a natural way to stay fit in the off season. Yeah. Yeah, that's very nice. Absolutely. And the other cool thing about it is they have a couple uh, girls that are on the team Great. as well. It's uh, in court, they just do it all together most of the time, I think. But there are a couple meets that I saw because I was looking ahead on Arbiter, and they have a couple like girls only meets um, okay. for whatever reason. Again, I don't know too much about all of that. Yeah. But uh, 
yeah, I'm looking forward to trying to cover some of those ge- uh, meets. Of course. Because yes. I haven't done that before, and, you know, it seems pretty cool. Yeah, I'll hold up my end of the deal, Eddie. You don't even worry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Up next, we were talking about it a little bit already, but indoor track. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people have been joining it, like we were saying, to stay in shape in their, you know, main sports exactly. off season. Yep. Um, but you've also got, besides running, you got field events yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, the interesting thing about uh, indoor track is, I, I think, where they do it. Yeah. Because there's very few places, I feel like, where you have an indoor track where you're also able, mm. you have enough space to throw a javelin and throw a discus. You know, because those things are d- somewhat dangerous. Although you know? we don't throw the javelin in the frontier halls, there is sometimes running meets practice there, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, I believe they outsource to. I'm I'm losing the the location, but they yeah. definitely do go somewhere with better facilities for mm-hmm. this. And listen, for the running events at least, most of the people that were on the cross country team that had that phenomenal season, yeah, are going to be on the indoor track team. Yeah, so I don't think I really need to say much else besides yeah, I that. Mean, it's going to hopefully yield the same results, and that mm-hmm. would be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Super excited. Totally. Another uh, winter sport that's going to be coming up is uh, skiing. I think they call it alpine skiing. That's the yeah. official term for it, and that's something we definitely don't cover. That would be a very difficult thing to cover, yes. Yeah. Um, although, I'm sure it's very exciting. Oh, um, yeah. That's cool. But, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I can't say I know anyone who's on the team do you know? No, I don't. I don't think so. Okay. You know, I feel like there's definitely people that I know that are on the team. They just it. They don't bring it up enough yeah, because it's course. not as popularized. Yeah. You know, I mean, if anyone on the team would like to spread some information to us that we can do. Oh, absolutely. Through FDA, through the Friday news or anything, please let us know. Yeah, hundred percent. Awesome. We'd love to learn more and hopefully maybe one day cover your game or a meet or uh, whatever you call it. Yeah, we'd have to look into logistics about that. But yeah, that was something that I felt really bad about with the fall sports, Mm. not being able to cover cross country and giving them, yeah, exactly, giving them the recognition that they deserve because there are some phenomenal athletes on those teams. And, you know, just because their sports are a little bit harder to cover, you know, I mean, like, not to say that that's not an excuse for us because it is, but at the same time, I do feel bad for them and I want them to get uh, the same kind of recognition. Yeah. Course. Yeah, and dream more. It is mm-hmm. tough. And uh, another sport. And this is a new sport that's being offered at uh, front. Well, new this year. It didn't happen last year. Yeah. It happened in years prior. Cheerleading. Cheerleading's happening. Yeah, I think that's very exciting. I mean, cheerleading, like I said earlier, is like one of those elements that really like brings up and gets the players hyped for a game. Like mm-hmm. we've seen it in basketball, we've seen it in football. Absolutely. And I feel like that's just like I'm excited. I hope that we can get some people to go do that. Yeah, absolutely. I did hear uh, some uh, interest. Some people like talking about it. They mm-hmm. seemed interested, which uh, is great. I'm not sure. Have you heard at all about who's going to be uh, coaching that? I did I, not. No. I, I think mean, I've seen some posters up in the building, and mm-hmm. I feel like they're getting some good hype for it. It's just I, I just personally don't know. Yeah, totally. I I think s- I've heard someone say that in the past, like when they did it. I don't even know how many years ago. Yeah. Uh, Miss Lawton was in charge of it, but. Okay. I, I would assume that she's not in charge of it again because she probably stopped doing it for some kind of commitment reason, I'd assume, and she still isn't able to. Yeah, but we don't want to speculate. I mean, Oh, no, of course not. Yeah, I mean, whoever's in charge, uh, please reach out to us again. Like, this is a situation. We'd love to learn more and share more. Absolutely. And hopefully help out in any way we could. Yeah, Yeah. 100%. Um, And, oh, also I wanted to mention, I saw this in an email. Uh, Skiing, they actually are doing a uh, co-op with the Mohawk Trail, I think. Um, so it's not the t- whole team is it's not going to be Red Hawk. It's not going to be actually okay. like yeah. Red Hawk based. It's going to be with that school and with a couple Frontier right. players, which is probably another reason why we aren't getting as much like publicity about it because it's more talked about at Mohawk than here because we don't know about it as much because there's fewer players from our school on the team. Yeah, made yeah. sense. Made sense. And speaking of co-ops, hockey, ice hockey, it's happening as a winter sport, and I'm very very excited for it because it, they're doing the co-op again with uh, Greenfield, and they have had Green some wave. great success in the past. Yeah, I mean, the Green, green Wave, I believe, right? Yeah, yes, Green Wave. I mean, they have had some pretty good games. It's always an exciting one to film, and we love going out there to cover it. It's yeah. Mr. Murphy's go-to. It's fantastic. One of his favorites. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, 
we're going to be able to cover some of those this year. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely looking forward to it. And hockey overall, for me, I love the fast-moving sports. And hockey is just about as fast as you can get. I mean, sometimes you can, if you don't have a good quality TV and you're watching the NHL, you don't know where the puck is Mm -hmm. on the ice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just moving so fast. And uh, it really, you know, grabs your attention and it keeps it. And, you know, I think basketball also does that because they move really Mm -hmm. fast. You get the breakaways and everything. And they're very similar in some ways, hockey and basketball in terms of strategy and, like, structure, of course. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. I'd also say that, like, sometimes there's just different values you get from different sports. Like, Mm -hmm. in seeing, like, damn, like, football, it's more, like, strategic and sort of, like, hard-hitting. Like, you want to... Like you want to see if you overcome the other team is how I see it sometimes. Or like yeah. golf, it's just pure skill and coordination. Yeah, and then with hockey, it actually is hard hitting. <laughs> Quite literally. Yeah. Yes. You know. <laughs> and you know that is also something that I'm kind of looking forward to because you mm-hmm. see a lot of. I mean, like football, of course, everyone's you know slamming into each other. But like with soccer, you get you know someone's bodying someone. You get the ref blowing a whistle and everything like that. In hockey, it's just, you slam into the boards and like there's all that kind of interaction, which can be very entertaining and very exciting. Yeah, it's interesting how that's commonplace, you know? Like, yeah. Like, that happens. And, yeah, you, I mean, that's you could like, definitely write a good essay about how society views it or how, <laughs> as yeah. a society, we oh, accept yeah. that and everything. Miss Walters would love that. Yeah, she would. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, yeah, that's all we got for the winter sports, and that's all we got for the fall sports. So that's all we got for this episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been the Red Hawk Roundup. I'm Mason. I'm Tyler. And we'll see you at the games.